Hello, this is Miss Poor, and we're going to get started with lesson 406, Isosceles Triangles, Part 2. Now, I need you guys to remember that when you're corresponding with me, either with KML or IM, whatever, you need to give me your course and section number with all communication. Your course number is going to be 203A, or if you're in Honors Geometry, it will be 204A. Your section number could be 1, 2, or 3. So please let me know because this helps me help you a lot faster. What we're going to be doing today is talking some more about the isosceles triangle and the isosceles triangle theorem as well as the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Let's review for just a moment. When we have a median of a triangle, that's a segment that's drawn from a vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. A midpoint is a point that divides a line segment into two congruent parts. And an angle bisector is a line, line segment, or ray that divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now let's remember what is an isosceles triangle. Most of you got this down, okay? First, we know that it has at least two congruent sides. And you can see that down here where they've labeled this legs. That's going to be my two congruent sides. The two congruent sides are the legs of the isosceles triangle. It's like a deja vu. And the two angles opposite the legs are the base angles. And you can see this right here. It says base angles with a little arrow pointing to those angles. The included side of the base angles is the base, which is this line segment right down here at the bottom. And the angle opposite of the base is the vertex angle. We have that labeled right here. Now, lucky for you, we're going to have to do a proof. I know you guys just love these. I had one student yesterday tell me it was like postulate charades. I thought that was so funny. I know you're laughing right now. Okay, what we're given is that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. And we see that with these little two tick marks on there telling us they're congruent. What we're going to have to prove is that angle A is congruent to angle C. And we can see the isosceles triangle theorem over here. It says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. That's what we're going to prove. Okay, we know the first thing that we always have is our given. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in right there. AB is congruent to BC, and that's a given statement. And we can see it in the figure as well. All right, now here is something we're going to do next. And we just, that's why I've included the median in the review. What we're going to do is we're going to add a median to our drawing. And just to help you get that visual, let me go up here and click on pin. And let's draw. This isn't going to be straight. It would be nice if I had a straight edge I could use on this. Oh, it's really bumpy. There we go. But you get the idea. It's a median. And it should be moved over just a little bit, but we'll be okay. We get the idea. So we drew the median. And you know what? You can do this with proofs. It's allowed. They're called auxiliary lines or figures, anything like that. Something that's going to help you prove the theorem. Okay, now then let's think about this. I've told several of you, if you go off to the side and you think, what do I do for number three? Okay, well now that I have that median, what do I know? Let's go ahead and do something. Whenever you draw something like this, you need to go ahead and label 
This point right here we're going to call D. Now we know several things from this, but remember, because of this segment, we know a couple of things. But remember what you're going to prove, that angle A is congruent to angle C. So how is that going to help me? Well, what I've also known, if I draw a median like that from the vertex perpendicular to the base, I can go ahead and draw a little perpendicular mark right there, which tells me it's a right angle. I know that when I do this with an isosceles triangle, it's going to split that base into two congruent segments. So I've got AD is going to be congruent to DC. So remember I've told y'all, especially those who have asked me for help, always write an if-then statement. So if I draw a median and remember your if is always a previous statement that you've given in your proof. So if I draw a median of triangle ABC then excuse me uh, segment AD will be congruent to segment DC. There's my new statement, okay? So you're going to write your if, you're going to pull from a previous statement. And I used, I draw a median, or draw a median of triangle ABC. That was my if. Well, what's going to be my then? Well, I went through the process and I showed you what the, end, the then is going to be. So what I'm going to write, and remember your then is always your current statement. So I'm going to write AD is congruent to DC. Now also remember, you don't always, always have to write an if-then statement. You may conclude these facts from your brain. I know it sounds awesome, something supernatural, but it does happen. You do do these things. Okay, so how do I know this? How do I know that this median that I drew is making these segments congruent? Ha! That's where we have to go and we have to look at our rules. This is where the student came up with the postulate charades. He's going, okay, I've written this if-then statement, and then I've got to go and look at all these rules I've learned through units one, two, three, and four, and figure out which one fits. And some of you are just now getting clued into all this. You're going, wait, 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 what are the rules? Okay, here's your rules. Postulates. Postulates. Theorems. Corollaries. Definitions. and properties. Remember, we learned a lot of properties, reflexive, transitive, all that, that you've had pounded into your head probably since junior, huh? Okay, so I go back through and I review all of these rules that I've been learning since unit one. And don't go past unit four, okay? Just units one, two, three, and four is what we can use right now. And what have I learned about medians? So when I look at my rules, I'm going to focus specifically on the word median. Okay, so I'm looking, look, 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 look. And what I come across is this. Definition of a median. Whoa, that is cool. Okay, so remember, what is the definition of a median? Well, if you look in your book, that, that book that they sent with you with all your K-12 materials, it's going to tell you that the median of a triangle is a segment drawn from the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of its opposite side. So that's how I got to figure that out. 
Now then, I'm going to switch slides, and unfortunately when I switch slides, everything I've written up here is going to be gone. Almost all of it. There we go. Definition of median. AD is congruent to CD. Alright, so now we look and we say, okay, what's next? Alright. I drew that segment in there. I'm going to try drawing it again. I can't live without it. Oh, this one looks a little bit straighter than the last one. I was trying too hard on that last one. Okay, so here I have this segment. What can I tell about that segment? Well, let's start out with an if. What if am I going to use? If, let's go back and use that number two again. If uh, I draw a median of triangle ABC, then, and I'm going, then what? I've already concluded that AD is going to be congruent to CD by using the definition of a median, but what do I know about that new segment that I drew? Hmm, check this out. And always keep in mind what you're trying to prove. Angle A is congruent to angle C. So let's go with BD is congruent to BD. Okay, so now I'm going to draw this. Whoa! Things are starting to come together now. I'm seeing it now that I drew those tick marks up there. So, now I've got to figure out, okay, this can be my number four. BD is congruent to BD. But how do I know that? Well, here comes that postulate charades again. Of course, it's more than just postulates. If you think about it, how do I know BD is congruent to BD? And you go back and you look. Don't ever forget about your properties. Okay? If you look through all of your properties, you will see... Oh, goodness. Forgot how to spell. Reflexive property of congruence and you can use the symbols I don't care that's the way we did it in college then you can do it this way too reflexive property of congruence well that's pretty cool I got four down but I'm still not there at proving those angles are congruent well let's look at this right quick let me let me change slides and get it all nice and neat looking again there you go Whoa! Don't look at that one yet. Alright, let's think. I've come up here. I've drawn that almost perfectly straight segment. What do I know now that I've done all of that? Look at those two triangles up there. We have triangle ABD and triangle CBD. And what do we know about those triangles? If all the sides are congruent, remember we've learned before about the side, side, side theorem? Check this out. Oh, well, we want to be able to write an if-then statement. Let me do an if-then statement. If, and you're going to pull it all together now, all of it. If AB is congruent, and you see I almost went and worked through this without writing the if-then statement. Because when you start absorbing all of this geometry knowledge, it just goes poof, and it starts just coming together instead of you having to sit and write all these if-then statements out, okay? But anyway, let's continue with the if-then statement and pull it all together. And look at, I'm going to be using statements 1, 3, and 4. So AB is congruent to BC. AD is congruent to CD. And BD is congruent to BD, then that tells me that triangle ABC is going to be congruent to triangle. Ah, uh, that shouldn't be a C, that should be a D. 
is going to be congruent to triangle CBD. Okay, so remember, previous statements, current statement. Now then, I've kind of already let the cat out of the bag on how I know that these triangles are congruent, and that's why I almost just wrote it down without the if-then statement, because when I look at my figure, I see all those sides are congruent, and it just popped into my mind, hey, those triangles are congruent because of the side, side, side theorem that we learned previously. That if all the sides of two triangles are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Okay? Wow. It looks like I'm almost to the point of proving those angles are going to be congruent to each other. So let's see what's next. Oh, there it is. Y'all had already gotten a glimpse of it. Okay, now let's look. If these two triangles are congruent, my line's a little off there, but y'all understand what's going on. Okay? And these angles are going to be congruent. We already know these guys up here are congruent, so that automatically means A and C are congruent, but we learned a special uh, theorem, I think it was, maybe corollary, I'm not, I can't remember. But it told me that angle A is going to be congruent to angle C. And remember these letters? CPCTC. Congruent parts of corresponding triangles are congruent. Now then, you could have written your if-then statement. All right? You could have. But by the time you got to this point, it was pretty easy to figure out because of the CPCTC, okay? All right, well, that's the end of that theorem. We have proven it. There you go. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And now let's look at theorem 4-2, converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent as well. So had they said, okay, angle A and angle C are congruent, proved us that segment AB is congruent to BC. You could have done the same thing, the same proof, but kind of flipped it around a little bit. Starting out with your number one statement and your number six statement, we're going to be flipped. Okay? All right. Let's go on see what else we're going to learn today. The measure of each angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. Okay, it's always going to be that way. And hopefully you know that because the sum of angles of all triangles, look at all those symbols I used. This little thing right here means sum. You might see it in an Excel spreadsheet, that's what it means. And are going to equal 180. Well, if I have three angles, 180 divided by 3, 60 degrees. So there you go. That's why that works. Okay. The bisector of a vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is the perpendicular bisector of the base. Whoa. Okay, watch this. Here I've got an isosceles triangle. I'm going to go down here. I put a bisector. It bis it's bisecting the angle, which made it perpendicular to the base. And we knew that these two guys down at the bottom were going to be congruent. We learned that about the median because this bisector is also a median. And, of course, it's bisecting the angle. So that makes those two angles up there congruent. All right. Let's take everything we've learned in this lesson and start applying it to some examples. This is find the value of each variable. Well, okay, if I know that angle E is congruent to angle F, that means the measure of angle E is going to equal the measure of angle F. I hope everybody agrees. They told me angle E was 72 degrees, so guess what? Angle F is going to be 72 degrees. 
So I solve for x, 72 degrees. But now I gotta solve for y. Well, remember what we said? All those angles add up to 180. So if I take 180 minus 72 minus 72, what am I gonna get besides an answer? I bet I'm gonna get 36. So y up here equals 36 degrees. Now then, this that I proved right here was the isosceles triangle theorem. This that I just worked out right here is the triangle sum theorem. Okay, this one says find the value of each variable. And it looks like we got an X and a Y, and they didn't give us any information really. They told us that the segments were congruent, and we know that angle M equals 90 degrees, and they told us the segments were congruent, so segment LM is congruent to MN. Okay, well remember, this looks like a right triangle, and it is a right triangle, but with LM and MN being congruent, that tells us it's also an isosceles triangle. So if I take 180 minus 90, that's gonna give me 90 degrees. Well, I've got two angles, okay? I've got angle N and angle L. And I'm gonna have to figure out what each of those measure. Well, since they're congruent, I can just divide that 90 by two. Each of those angles are gonna be 45 degrees. And we're gonna learn more about a 45, 45, 90 later. Because it's called a special triangle. Okay, now Y should be pretty easy. And by the way, this was the isosceles triangle theorem that figured that out. Oh, and the triangle sum theorem. All right, now to figure out why. Well, what do we know about the angle measure of a straight line? It's 180. So if I take 45 away from 180, that'll leave me 135, which is how much y equals. And that was from way a long time ago, the linear pair postulate. Okay, find the values of X and AC. Whew. Find the values of X and AC. All right, let's figure this out. If angle A is 32 degrees, that means angle C is 32 degrees. Okay, because those guys are going to be congruent. So let's look at the triangle sum theorem. It tells us if I take well, I don't want to write that right now. If I take angle A plus angle B plus angle C, I'm going to get 180 degrees. Angle A is 32. Angle B is 32. Oh, oh, let me back up one second. Angle B is not 32. I got my letters mixed up. Angle B is going to be 8x, and then angle C is 32. So let me see. I'm going to add those 32s together, and I'm going to get 64. I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides, and what do I get? Oh, let me get my handy-dandy calculator. 180 minus 64 gives me 116. Divide both sides by 8. Divide by 8. X equals 14.5. And it says find the value of X. So I found the value of X.
Oh, goodness. Oh, wait. Oh, that was the wrong problem. I was thinking, whoa, maybe I didn't find the value of x. Okay, that was correct. All right. Now, how am I going to find the value of AC? Since I found a value for X, I know what AC is because AC equals 2X. So if I plug in that 14.5, it's going to give me 28.29. And I'll put units out there because they didn't tell me how long it was. So there's your answer for AC. Okay, I think this is, well, next to the last example. It, oh, I don't think I like this one. Find the measures of angles LMN. Okay, I know it's all right. I thought it was a different kind of problem that y'all really didn't need to learn right now, but it's okay. It's going to work out great. We know with these two guys right here being congruent, we know these angles down here are congruent. So we can set up this problem just like this. Let me put measure of angle M is going to equal the measure of angle L. And now I'm just plugging in what their expressions are, just like that. I like to keep my X's on one side that are positive. So I'm going to subtract 7X from both sides. That gives me 4X minus 28 equals 4. Then I'm going to add 28 to both sides. I'm going to get 4X equals 32. Divide both sides by 4. I get X equals 8. Let me see, what did the question ask for? Now that I found X, I always go back and look. Find the measures of the angles. Okay, so the measure of angle M equals 11. I'm going to plug in that 8 minus 28, which gives me 88 minus 28, whew, which gives me 60. Okay, well, if I know the measure of angle M is going to give me 60, I don't have to calculate L. I know it's going to be 60 degrees. And guess what, guys? Remember what we said about equilateral triangles? 180 divided by 3, everybody's going to equal 60 degrees. So I don't even have to plug in for X for angle N. I already know that it's 60 degrees. But you're more than welcome to go ahead and plug it in if you want to, just to prove whether you're correct or not. Okay, given points F and E are on AD, FC bisects BFE and BCE, prove that angle BCF and angle FCE are isosceles. Now, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, but the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to mark up this picture with all the information they gave me. They said points F and E are on AD, right here. They said that FC bisects angle BFE, which would be right here. So since it bisects, I can put marks like that, and BCE. Now for right now, I don't know that those angles are congruent because it didn't tell me this was a square or anything. So I'm going to put two tick marks right there. Then it says prove that BCF, I mean angle BCF and angle, I th I'm sorry, I think those should be triangles. Uh, are isosceles. Let me change that to triangles. B, C, F are isosceles. 
Okay, so they're wanting us to see if these angles right here, I mean those segments right there are congruent. Okay, so let's see if we can't go through this one pretty quickly. First thing you always write down, you may have to draw your, I'm going to put statement here, reasons over here. Just going to draw me a little T chart. Oh, that's not a very straight line. So one is going to be that FC bisects angle BFE and angle BCE. My reason for that is it's given. They gave it to me in the beginning. The second one, I've got to figure out what to put. Okay? So, I'm just going to think this in my head instead of writing out the if-then statements. I'm going to say, well, if segment FC bisects BFE and BCE, then I know that the measure of BFC equals the measure of CFE. And look how I've already marked that up there. I've already marked them that they're congruent right up in here. I'll also know that measure of BCF equals the measure of FCE. So since I've already written those up there, because I know what the definition of an angle bisector is, I'm going to go ahead and use that for my next statement and reason. So I'm going to put measure of BFC, I have to look at the angles and see how they're working there, equals the measure of angle CFE, running out of space. Let me go down here and fix that because that's going to drive me crazy while I'm trying to work this problem. Let me move it over just a little bit. I don't know why it went crooked while ago. And the measure of BCF uh, angle equals the measure of FCE, angle FCE. And like I already said, I know what the definition of an angle bisector is, so that's what I'm going to write here. Definition angle bisector. Okay. Now let's take that information and I look and I say, well, if FC bisects those, don't I know that FC is going to be congruent to itself? So that's kind of an if-then statement, but not. So if I know that FC bisects it, then I know that BFC is going to be congruent to FC. And remember, that's the reflexive property. And keep in mind what we're trying to solve, or what we're trying to prove, is that these triangles are isosceles. Okay? So, right now, it looks like that I have proven that the two triangles are congruent to each other. We know they're congruent to each other. So triangle BCF is congruent to triangle FCE. And then let's look at how I know that. Angle Okay, I had my angle my side and my angle of both of the triangles. So I know they're congruent because of angle, side, angle. Now then, I also know that since those angles are congruent, I can say that BC segment BC is congruent to segment BF because of the theorem that I learned today, the converse of isosceles 
triangle theorem. Oh, and I, I forgot to include these guys. CE is also congruent to EF. And then remember what we were trying to prove? That triangle BCF and triangle FCE were isosceles. And I know that because of the definition of isosceles triangle. Okay, in this lesson, we've proved that an isosceles triangle theorem and we looked at its converse. Uh, we learned two corollaries of the isosceles triangle theorem. And remember, a corollary is an additional theorem that can be easily derived from the original theorem. You should be going through the LMS 406, Isosceles Triangles Part 2, and complete the student guide. Read the pages in the reference guide. Complete the problems in the problem set. And contact me or attend TOGA if you have any questions before you attempt the quiz. And be sure to make note of any general questions you may have for when we meet next in CC. And that's going to be it for Lesson 406. Thanks for listening.